Welcome back folks. Now as you probably know there are a number of different exocrafts we can use in No Man's Sky ranging from submarines to exomechs and everything in between. These exocrafts greatly improve our ability to explore planets and their oceans but that's not all they can do. Oh no they're equipped to do much more than that so in this video I'm going to go over everything you need to know about the different exocrafts in the game and the abilities they have to help improve your experience. So without further ado let's go ahead and get stuck in. So, as of the creation of this video in June 23, there are currently 6 different exocrafts available to us to use on any planet or moon, and of course, these vehicles re require fuel to move. Each one can become available to us by building their respective geobays, and we can grab the blueprints for any of these by either using the exocraft terminal in one of our bases, or we can unlock it at the research room on board the space anomaly. Now normally, you can only summon one of your exocraft as long as you're within 750U away from the exocraft's geobay, but if you decide to get yourself an exocraft summoning station and build it, you can then summon any of your owned exocraft to your position from any other location on the planet within the entire system that you're currently in. Now that's pretty neat, right? And as of the Sentinel update last year, you can now pick up the exocraft summoning station and carry it around your inventory, similar to how you can carry around a personal refiner. And for those of you who own a freighter, you can also build an orbital exocraft materializer which is a piece of powerful technology which is going to allow you to summon any of your own exocraft whenever your freighter is present within the star system. And as a side note, if you don't yet have a freighter, why don't you check out my video showing you how you can get your hands on your very first freighter for free. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below for you. It really is a 5 minute job and it is super simple. So, the good news when summoning your exocraft is their inventory and any installed technology is going to be present no matter where you summon it from and where the exocraft is, be that a different planet, a different star system or even a total different galaxy. And finally on the overview, you can in fact customise your exocraft's appearance. It's not that in depth so you can't change the components, size and so on but you do have the ability to change the paint colours, decals and boost particle colours as you do this using their respective summoning stations using the orange panel. It's more than we can currently do with our starships, just about, but it's still not greatly in depth. So as I mentioned a minute ago there are currently 6 exocraft vehicles that we can get their hands on. And these are the Roma, the Nomad, the Pilgrim, Colossus, Minotaur and the Nautilon. Acquiring all of them requires you to have the relevant Geobay blueprints which can be obtained using the Construction Resource Station and the Exocraft Terminals at your base, or in the case of the Nautilon Chamber, by following the Dreams of the Deep mission. So they're the 6 different Exocraft types and how to get them, but what is the difference between each one? I'm going to start with the Roma as it's the first Exocraft players can get their hands on as unlocking its Geobay is a prerequisite for unlocking the Geobays of all the other Exocrafts. The Roma is a medium sized Exocraft and it's a great all rounder really with 28 inventory slots and it's capable of quickly crossing all kinds of terrain so it's a great starter vehicle to use. And as I said you can unlock the Geobay from the Roma on board the Space Anomaly but you can also unlock it out of base computer if you follow the base computer archives questline. If you do follow that, it is going to give you access to the Roma without having to actually build an Exocraft terminal at your base, so if you're fairly new to No Man's Sky, I would definitely recommend following that quest line. Next up we have the Nomad, which is a small and light Exocraft, and where it lacks in the inventory slots, which it only has 16 of, it makes up for in speed and agility because it's a hovercraft. You're able to glide over water with relevant ease, so you can really go anywhere above the surface on any planet with this one. It's also probably the most fuel efficient exocraft of the lot and it comes with the exocraft acceleration module pre-installed. And this gives you about a 1 second small burst every 3 seconds. So if you want a small quick and nimble exocraft that can also glide over water, go ahead and get yourself a Nomad. So next up is a Pilgrim and like the Nomad this is a light exocraft which has 16 inventory slots and the exocraft acceleration module pre-installed. It's not one for water as it is incredibly slow when trudging through it but it is the only 2 other exocraft in the game and if you manage to fully upgrade it, it becomes the fastest exocraft over land because it is built for it. And this is because it has the shortest boost cooldown and is able to take huge leaps but as I said, it will crawl along in water so if you wanted to make your way across the dry sections of a planet's surface quickly, get yourself a pilgrim and fully upgrade it, otherwise if you want to go on water, definitely get something else. 
So moving on, and as you probably expect, the Colossus is the largest of the Exocraft in No Man's Sky as it can give you a whole 42 slot inventory, which is perfect for you players out there who enjoy resource harvesting and installing a number of upgrade modules. It also comes with the Exocraft mining laser pre-built into it to help you do exactly that. But because it's the largest, it is probably also the slowest land-based Exocraft due to the sheer size, and when it was originally released in the game, it was only even regarded as a mobile cargo unit due to its weak engine and lack of grip, but it got a bit of an update when the next update was released which turned it into a proper space truck. This update made it faster and more agile, but as I mentioned, still slower than the other land-based Exocraft, but it wasn't built for speed and agility. You get it for cargo and that is where it excels greatly. So if you want a lot of resource space, get yourself a Colossus. So moving on to the first non-wheelbase Exocraft, this is the Minotaur. The Minotaur is a mechanical walker that contains 28 inventory slots and it can be used to explore pirates, perform mining, combat and exploration tasks. It now also has its own independent jetpack and with the environmental control unit installed, it becomes immune to all planetary hazards. It does have its own mining capabilities and you can upgrade it to a Minotaur bot which gives you terrain manipulation capabilities as well, similar to how we can do that on our own multi-tools. The Minotaur itself is also an amphibious exocraft meaning you can use it underwater and finally you can actually install an AI pilot onto it meaning that it will engage in combat with aggressive sentinels around if you happen to be on foot. All sounds pretty great right? However it's not perfect, it's pretty slow moving the exocraft even with the new jump mechanics and if you have it fighting in AI mode its parts will become damaged and require repairs, but all around it's a great exocraft to have and certainly one of the best looking. And as a side note, I have created a full guide on how to get the Minotaur AI pilot installed, so check that video out. It also comes with how to install the new armour. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below for you. And finally, we have the Nautilon, which is the only fully water-based exocraft in the game, of course, as of the creation of this video. It's designed specifically for underwater navigation, exploration, combat and mining. You can summon it to any ocean on any planet, as well as docking at any underwater buildings. It comes with 28 inventory slots and has its own special drive, the Humboldt Drive. Now, as this is the only true water-based exocraft, you don't have much choice but to use it if you want to properly explore the depths of the ocean. However, it is rather slow and in my opinion doesn't look good at all, but we're just going to have to make do with it until Hello Games decide to bring out something new. So, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, these exocraft can do a lot more than just allow you to explore planets, so let's go into a bit more detail about what they can actually do aside from that. So, let's start with the Nautilon, as I alluded to just a minute ago, it can do more than just explore underwater. You can get blueprints that you can unlock for this water-based exocraft that's going to allow you to scan for nearby minerals, nearby crashed ships, nearby crashed freighters, sunken buildings and submerged ruins. All you need to do to get all those capabilities is to install the high power sonar upgrade. And that's not all, you can also add a mining laser and a cannon which lobs large explosives, so you can make the Nautilon pack a punch as well. Moving back to the Minotaur, and as I said earlier, you can install the AI upgrade which allows it to fight for itself in combat situations when you are on foot, but it can also scan for nearby minerals and buildings, harvest tough materials and manipulate the terrain as well. The Minotaur itself, especially if you're at the controls, can be a really good ally in intense combat situations so it's worth adding all of the combat upgrades as well as all of the hard frame armour. Then you'll be no match for anyone or anything. Right, so the Roma, the Colossus, the Nomad and the Pilgrim all have the same upgrade modules so these apply to all of them. With these primary land-based exocraft, you can add upgrades to scan for a whole bunch of different things, including resource deposits and depots, ruins and monoliths, abandoned buildings, and finally drop pods. So basically, the vast majority of online buildings can be found with the relevant upgrades added to these four exocraft. The three of them you need are the E-Signal Booster, the E-Advanced Signal Booster, and the E-Signal Booster Tau. You can also add a variety of other upgrades which is going to improve the driving performance of each exocraft, making them immune to all harsh environments, and they can also allow you to mine resources and lob explosives towards sentinels and the like. So pretty all rounder for all four of these. And so as you can see, these exocraft aren't just fancy ways of roaming around on land or in the oceans. 
I do hope that in future updates we can get another faster and better looking water based exocrafter challenge than Nautilon that perhaps comes as part of a major underwater based update. I have always wanted one of those. So what do you think of the exocraft we currently have available to us in No Man's Sky? Do you like them? Do you think we need more or need new upgrades for them? If so, let me know in the comments below. And that folks is absolutely everything you need to know about the various exocraft vehicles you can acquire in No Man's Sky as of June 2023. I hope you found this video useful and if you're still here it would be totally awesome if you could support my channel by hitting those like and subscribe buttons. You can now also become a channel member as well where I'll be posting coordinates to a whole bunch of super rare and unique items and places to visit. You'll also get some unique emojis and badges when leaving comments as well, what's not to love about that right? And as always, thank you for watching the video and I'll catch you in the next one.